Hi, the following is another installment on VFD troubleshooting using an oscilloscope. In this presentation, we're going to look at the DC bus on a VFD. We're going to start out this presentation with a brief overview of why it may be necessary to use an oscilloscope to look at a drive's DC bus voltage. We're then going to have a safety moment. We're then going to discuss where do we physically hook up a scope on a physical drive itself? Where do we hook up the voltage probes to this uh, VFD? We'll then get into the me the presentation on how to set up the scope and look at the differences between DC and AC coupling settings on the scope. And then we're going to end the presentation with WEMS if we have a high DC bus voltage ripple, how do we solve the problem depending on the cause of the problem. Here are three reasons why you may need to use an oscilloscope to look at a VFD's DC bus. The first one is if a VFD has been packaged with a passive harmonic input filter. There could be oscillations between the drive and the filter. The second one is in industrial applications, sometimes there's oscillating loads such as stamp presses that can cause ripples on the DC bus. And the third cause could be poor input power quality to the VFD that could be causing issues on the drive's DC bus. All these issues could cause the drive to trip out on nuisance over voltage, under voltage, input phase loss, or over current warnings or faults. Electrical safety is very important when working with a variable frequency drive, especially when making measurements on the DC bus of the drive. You should wait five minutes after power has been removed before making any connections of voltage probes to the VFD. For those that are not familiar with their VFD schematic and what it means to measure the DC bus of a drive, I just want to cover that real quick. Here is a basic variable frequency drive schematic. On the top there in yellow by the red plus sign is considered the positive DC bus. The yellow highlighted line going horizontally on the bottom by the red minus sign is the negative DC bus. It's very important to notice that the negative DC bus is not the same as earth ground. So when we hook up our meter to the drive's DC bus, we just hook up one voltage probe to the positive side and the other voltage probe to the negative side to take the DC bus measurement. So now where do we physically land our voltage probes to measure the DC bus in a drive? Well, that can depend on the actual brand and model of the VFD. On the ABB ACH580 series drives, the smaller horsepowers include the R1, R2, and R3 frame drives. Access to both the positive and negative DC bus are not right next to each other. Access to the positive DC bus, as shown on the image on the right red oval, is the point UDC+. Plus. The terminal to the right of it, labeled R-, minus, is not the same as the negative DC bus. That's part of the brake chopper circuit. We'll cover in the next slide where to access the ne uh, negative DC bus terminal. The below three images represent the ACH580 R1, R2, and R3 frame drives connection point for the negative DC bus. In the red circle on each image, there is a recessed eye loop. That is the connection point that you need to connect your voltage probe on your meter to access the negative side of the DC bus. On larger horsepower drives, access to both the positive and negative DC bus is usually easier. On the 580 series, they include the R4 through R9 frame drives. Access to the UDC plus and UDC minus terminals are both right next to each other, as shown in the red oval in the image on the right. We're going to review how to set up an oscilloscope to look at the DC bus using two different methods on the scope. We're first going to use the DC coupling method on the scope to look at the signal, which makes a lot of sense. DC coupling, DC bus on a drive, they're both the same term. But we're going to find out that by using DC coupling, the actual resolution of the ripple on the DC bus, which is what we're trying to analyze, will not be that high. We're then going to switch over and set the scope up for AC coupling. And we're going to actually see that the resolution of the signal or the ripple will be a lot higher. And this doesn't make a whole lot of sense why we would want to use AC on a DC signal, but the actual ripple on the DC bus is actually sinusoidal-like. So it actually works out that using AC coupling is a better method. Before we start taking measurements, we want to always make sure that the scope is set up correctly to the voltage probe that's attached to it. I'm using a 10 to 1 voltage probe, and you can see here I have that uh, set up correctly. I'm also going to reduce the bandwidth on the input channel A uh, down to 10 kilohertz, which is the lowest setting on the scope. The signal I'm measuring is only has a frequency of 360 hertz. So any high frequency noise I don't that can be picked up by the voltage probe, I don't want that to be displayed on the scope screen. And we'll see in the next few slides an example of what that looks like, the difference between the high frequency noise versus cleaning up the signal and put, uh, reducing the bandwidth. We're first going to look at the ripple on the DC bus of the drive in DC coupling mode. Here you can see a channel A set for DC coupling. The scope automatically found the signal and it's decided to show it as a 200 volts per division. And you can see there's not a whole lot of resolution here. So one of the things I want to do is increase the resolution of the signal. So I'm first going to reduce the volts per division to 100. And then I'm going to move the signal down as it moved off the screen. 
I'd like to actually have more resolution at maybe 10 volts per division, but I wouldn't be able to fit the signal on the screen then. So in this scenario, the best I can do is 100 volts per division. I'm now going to decrease the time period so I can see the actual ripple on the DC bus. And then I'm gonna hold the screen or freeze it. I'm now gonna use the cursors to measure the peak to peak voltage. As you can see here, the line's pretty tiny. So what I'm looking at, or I'm trying to measure, you just try and do your best here and you can see it appears, you know, the measurement on channel A is around 24 volts DC. Now I'm going to use the horizontal cursors to measure the time period of the signal. When you have three phase coming into a full wave rectific uh, rectification diode bridge, the DC bus ripple will be 360 hertz or 2.8 milliseconds, which you can see here. And I now want to look at the same DC bus ripple but in AC coupling mode on the scope. As you can see here, I've gone to auto mode just as before, I have in DC coupling mode, that's how the scope showed it. But I'm now gonna to transition to AC coupling on channel A. And now you can see the line is now in the middle of the screen that represents the DC bus. Now, as I increase the volts per division, I get a lot more resolution, as you can see, and I uh, decrease the time. Now you can see there's a lot of hash on the screen. And as I mentioned before, you want to probably decrease the bandwidth. So here you can see all that hash, and now I have a much cleaner signal as I got rid of all that high frequency noise I was picking up. Now you can see on channel A, I have set it up so I'm measuring the peak to peak voltage, which right now the scope is averaging all the, the doing the math and coming up with 17 volts peak to peak. What I can then do is also again look at uh, using the vertical cursors, I can look at the time period now on uh, on the signal, which again is 360 hertz, same as before, which is what we expect. And I can also use the cursors uh, horizontally to look at the uh, peak to peak voltage and, uh, instead of using relying on just the math uh, of channel A. And you can see it's a similar, I'm measuring 11.8 volts here um, uh, using the cursors. Using the AC coupling is a much, as you can see, is a much better way of looking at the DC bus uh, on the a scope. Now that we know how to look at the DC bus on a scope, what happens if we see a high voltage peak to peak ripple on the DC bus? And we have the drive tripping out on faults. How do we resolve the problem? Well, it depends on what's causing the problem. The most common cause of a high voltage DC bus ripple is because an input harmonic passive filter has been attached to the front of the drive to reduce input harmonics on the electrical system. Well, that passive harmonic filters capacitors usually will start to resonate with the drive's DC bus capacitors. So how do we fix that? On the ABB ACH580 series drive, we actually have a parameter called DC bus stabilization, which is parameter 9748, that can be adjusted to help resolve the problem. Other solutions are to adjust that capacitor activation point, or when the contactor for the capacitor and the filter pulls in, or also the motor control method, maybe trying a vector control method instead of scalar. Now, if your DC bus oscillation is caused by input power issues, check for balance input voltage and current, Make sure everything's balanced there. If you have bad connections, make sure you adjust those connections. Maybe you have a loose connection that could be causing a high DC bus ripple. If all the connections, everything look good, and you maybe you just have pure unbalanced input voltage causing imbalanced input current to the drive, possibly adding an input line reactor in front of the VFD will help resolve the high peak to peak voltage DC bus ripple. All right, let's summarize what we've learned in this presentation. First off, from an electrical safety standpoint, remember to wait five minutes once power has been removed before making any connections to the VFD. Depending on the model and brand of VFD, the access to the DC bus can be different. So make sure to review a manual for proper terminal locations if necessary. When we set up a scope for the voltage probe, we wanna make sure that we set it up correctly so that the signal will be scaled correctly on the scope. We learned the differences between DC coupling and AC coupling. AC coupling, you can see the voltage ripple much easier compared to DC coupling. And if you do have a high peak to peak voltage ripple on a DC bus, depending on the cause, there can be different solutions. Some of them can be just adjusting some parameter settings in the drive, while other ones may require additional hardware, such as a line reactor to resolve a DC bus ripple issue. This concludes the presentation on how to use a scope to measure a drive's DC bus voltage. If you have any further questions, please reach out to your local ABB representative.